and good, good afternoon, good morning. If this is the first time you saw us, we uh, have been here uh, several times at MCF and we're so thankful, uh, especially at this time of the occasion of Mother's Day. So what can you say about mothers like you? Because I can't say anything. Mother's Day song. Wow, Mother's Day song. Okay. 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 N A N N Y. Yeah. Okay. Now don't for, don't forget to put the last A and the N before the Y. You know N A N A Y. That's how you write, Earl. You know, huh? You think I'm again? It's good. Yeah, it's good. Because sometimes they, we uh, we replace the last N, the last A to, to N, double N. How do you spell that? N A N N Y. How do you say that? Nani. So nannies are not nannies. They are a sure help, but then they're not the, only, not the only thing that they do. And so we want to see this. Okay, man. Can you see that? Okay. It's it's on the PowerPoint one of us. Show the PowerPoint if you would. Yeah, yeah. PowerPoint one of for me. So we're seeing this uh, Mother's Day. Now. I just wrote this on the way here yesterday uh, from Indiana crossing the border. Because we spent an hour and a half in the border of uh, Michigan to cross here. I don't know why. Uh, you know, searching for something, I don't know. So uh, it's good that we did not make all our like, buying boxes to the border. We, we sent it to Michigan before we, we crossed the border, because otherwise they'll be opening all the like, buying boxes. Milton Christian Fellowship, the folder MCF, yeah, Milton Christian Fellowship. And uh, the, it's a PowerPoint that says Mothers. Is it there? No PowerPoint, MCF. Copyrighted, it's, it's free for everyone. Did it work? Yeah, from PowerPoint? There you go. Yeah, and so that's how it looked like 20 years ago. This year we celebrate 20 years of coming to the to North America. The girls were two and three, Debbie and Denise, and Arnie even saw them, they were small, you know, or saw them, they were that, that big. Uh, the next, the go to the next slide, would you please thank you, Pastor? So that's how they looked like one more in 2004, I think it was, yeah, 2004. I uh, fast forward, one more slide, 2021. That's how they looked like two years ago when they uh, finally transferred to the United States. Our Debbie graduated from USD in Manila said, I want to work in the US in 2020. So 2021, we came here and she was left behind here to work at a uh, restaurant first down at the field of the dealership in Richmond, Indiana. Our daughter Denise transferred as a junior from La Salle in the Philippines to Liberty University in Virginia. So she's about to finish this year. Uh, almost tuition free, praise God. It's good that she's smart like her mom. You know? <laughs> So praise God. The next uh, slide will show you how it looked like now. Now only the two of us, no one, no girls in the middle. They used to be in the middle, now they're no longer there. You know, all these are words. And we're out of uh, church planning ministries. We praise God for, for that ministry helping us along with all our support coming through church planning to the Philippines. The next uh, slide will show you that picture of our YouTube channel. If you're in it, I'm there twice a day, seven days a week. The name of the channel is Church seven days a week. So for church, number seven days a week. I'm there every single day, twice a day, uh, live. So the Philippine time usually. So the next night, Pastor, we'll go, we'll go show you how we all started 15 years ago. We started in this small apartment right outside the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. The next time we'll show you how we, we did it in the morning. It's seven days a week. It says free coffee uh, every single day. You know that story already right, six o'clock. We open that time uh, then at eight o'clock, we open the study room for the students of the uh, public schools to go and study for free internet because they don't have internet in their homes, so we, we teach them. At the end of the day, we do this. We celebrate worship every single night. No one complains 
because all of our neighbors are being the members of the church now. The next slide will show you a, a transformation of the church. So from that house to this building now, our next door neighbor, who's an atheist, you probably know that, I told you a few years ago, uh, has built us this church, and we continued on me training 24 preachers coming from our church, and they planting churches from preaching, and we praise God for calling them as pastors. So from church number one, we're now in church number nine, as soon as we go back in June, we're starting Tumana in Marikina. Pray for that. The next uh, slide will show you that picture. One more slide, Pastor. Yeah, one more slide, thank you. But that picture of the building that we're on right now for eight years, the owner of that building got saved last year, October 4th last year. She came to me and she said, you can buy the property next year. And she said, give me a, an amount. He said, it's a 400 square meter property with a building. And she said, it's 416,000 US dollars. So you can compute that in Canadian. And I said, before I say anything, can I read you a verse? I read to her Ecclesiastes 12.13. I gave out a, a Bible to her in Tagalog. And it says, well, the whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. And I said, to fear God is not mean to be frightened by him because he's not a ghost, but to reverence him as a living being. Do you believe that? And she said, yes, for some reason. But the next I said, I said keep his commandments, meaning I am the way, the truth, the life. That's what Jesus Christ said. No one will come to the Father except by me. And I said, do you believe that? And she said, she believes it. So I said, would you mind if you pray the sinner's prayer to accept Christ in your heart? Repent of your sins. And I went on and on. And she said, no, let's pray. So we prayed together, Paul. After we prayed, she opened up her eyes in that coffee shop, looked around and said, uh, let's do this. Next year, if you give me 198,000 US dollars, the property is yours. You know, for 416,000 to that's a 55% discount. Just because she got sick. Because what's the property of man who gets the whole world? Lose her own soul. So imagine if we went back June 40, we're flying back to the Philippines. Next Monday, we return to the United States. When she says, I want to be baptized. Well, what if she says that? Then I say, good, so it's already for free if I baptize you. <laughs> you know, I've got this, we think that pay, you know? <laughs> everything free. But we want her to believe in the God who's able to provide all her needs. Amen. Pray with us because we've had about 65% of $198,000 already, and we know it's not impossible with God. Amen. We can always go to any politician in the Philippines and ask for $198,000, it's just easy. But we don't want to do that. We want men, brethren, boys and girls to be part of this dollar through dollars and see what God is doing so we can all rejoice whenever we get that property. The next uh, slide will show you a picture of, uh, I think it's the, the lyrics already of the song, if I'm not mistaken. There you go. One more slide, Pastor. Yeah, this is the English part. There it is, okay? So here, here's how it goes, ready? Right? Yeah. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. Arm is right and right, she'll always be. Put them all together, they spell mother. A word that means the world to me. Sing with us, here we go. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. Arm is right and right, she'll always be. Put them all together, they spell mother. A word that means the world to me. Now it gets better in Filipino. Go to the next slide, Pastor. Here's the Filipino part. Here we go. Are you ready? The title is N A N A Y. Don't ask me why. Okay? One, two, three. Nanay ang daming inaasikaso. Ayos lagi ang kanyang ngiti. Nandyan at lagi umaalalay Abot palagi kanyang kamay 
So it's a beautiful song that we just wrote on the way here, just got inspired with, you know, what is happening here in the weekend. And you know what? We, praise God, we still have our nanas, but there are people here who don't have their nanas already. You've contributed them in heaven already. We praise God for that. You know, me and Earl were talking, and the Kriya Willi was uh, preaching about the mother-in-laws. I looked at him, I said, you know, God saved us. Our mother-in-laws are already in heaven. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Her mom, would would kill me she does not like me because i became a pastor and you know they paid a lot of uh, for her tuition so that she would marry a businessman <laughs> and then so when, when they learned when she learned she did not attend her wedding really with me was not there 27 years ago but you know what at the point of death she gave her life to jesus god made a miracle out of that the following day eight doctors in manila medical thought that he died she died already because of death but she woke up out of that coma for eight days. You know what she looked for? Looked for me. Then we were outside the ICU. The nurse came out and talked to her. Because she's the daughter. And uh, she said, Inahanap na po si Roel. Ako, but ako. Probably going to ring my neck or something. But then she came in and she really wanted to see me. So I came in. And I said, Ma, kamusta ka? You know what she said? Read the Bible to me. So I started with Genesis 1-1. One, one. <laughs> you know, we read the Bible together, and God gave her two and a half more years. You know, sweet as a sweet can be. So we praise God for that, you know? And uh, so we, we continue to pray and thank God for all the nanas in here. And uh, we want to sing one more song, that's okay. Okay, Good. 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 Yeah, Good. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Good. Good. Wow. Good. 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 I don't say I did it, I'm an innocent thing to like. You don't know things like that, you know. Mothers, and thank you for all your, uh, your, your strength and confidence doing this for your children.
you not eat, Louis? So, yeah, so here's a song, your number one song, so I'll give it away on the, on the folder. Yeah, this is just, that's just an MP3. So here's a song and I'll give it away. Because hey, as, uh, as Boaz did, he gave it all away, you know? He really sacrificed a lot. And that's what we all need to do to experience joy in Christ, learn how to give it away. Here's the song. If you want more happy than your heart will hold, if you want to stand tall and the truth were told, take whatever you have and give it away. This corn is just, just, just right. Just boil it up for your supper tonight. I heard what my grandfather used to say. Nothing's quite as good till you give it away. If you want more happy than your heart will hold, you want to stand tall. It's about 85 years ago. Well, let's see what I can remember. You see, my grandfather was a farmer during the Second World War. He came to Santa Lord because of an American missionary. So I hope, I hope you'll hear these words I have to say. He and his wife got saved because this American missionary was actually also a military soldier. Share the gospel to him, both of them got saved, and they started the very first Baptist church in Tanay Rizal. And today, because of their commitment, all the sons, the grandsons, now the great grandsons have become pastors, and then there's also over a thousand churches planted all over the Philippines now. Amen. Better happy than your heart will hold if you want to stand tall when the truth were told. with me for as long as we both shall live. 
And I remember 27 years ago, we didn't know what's going to happen with our relationship. Even when we get kids, you know, and we have two daughters, we either 20 to 23. You know, three years ago, 2021, I remember in April, Debbie, we went to the Tandam Sora wet market. You know what a wet market is? Wet market. What's a wet market? Not a dry market. Palenque. So she had the wet market, the Terra Palenque. So only Christine could go down the car. So she went down. And Debbie and I, she's 22, 21, were left inside the car. And she asked me, Dad, Sabine, why did we choose Christianity? I looked at her. And I said, I love that's very interesting you asked me that because when I was your age, 21 years old, I also asked the same thing to my dad. I just graduated from seminary. Then I asked my dad, Dad, why did you choose you know, Christianity? All of us are pastors. And you know what my dad said? Anna, it's too late, you graduated already. <laughs> you don't know why. But you know, see, he said, you know, Christianity is not perfect. We have our lumps and bumps, and we know that how it works, you know. But you know, he said, it is closest to the will of God. If you want to please God, go Christian. Go follow Christ. And I embraced it when I was 21 years old. I didn't know how, why, because then you have to go to the Thomas Jefferson Library to research. I don't want to do that. So I just embraced it and believed. So I told Debbie, after 24 years, Debbie, look at Daddy, look at Mommy. How do we do? I said, you know why you asked me that? Because you're searching. And she's searching really, really. YouTube, Twitter, following and Instagram, a lot of different philosophies, practices, and faith, you know. And I told her this, and that's how you said, yeah. I would not stop you from doing that because I want you to compare Christianity against all the philosophies, faith, and any, any, any kind of, of faith this world has. You know why? Because Christianity has the only founder who lived, died there, he was rose again, and rose again, and he's coming back to take us. Only Christianity. This is during that time, you know, Debbie was searching. And I told her, I said, you know, when all come to the judgment seat of Christ, Daddy will not be there with you. You will be alone, taking account on how you believe and what you believe in. So I said, I don't want to spoon feed you. You're 21 years old. She's 23 now. Praise God, you know. She came back to the review. Came back to the Yes, I go many, many times as parents, we're so worried about our children, you know, with their faith and everything. And, you know, what they do now is just different when we were growing up. And it should not be compared because it's a different situation, you know, generation. During my time when we were growing up at the Army, we were elementary school students. And during my time, my, my parents would always tell me, Anna, you know, when we were kids, we were not like you. You're very stubborn. You know, and the same goes over and over again. And our parents would just pray that we would find the Lord. And we praise God, the Lord did that only find the Lord, she find her. Next day, so, she, you know, it's, it's interesting, or her find you, on you, or something like that. You know, it's interesting that in this world, you have to find God by yourself. You cannot hold on to your, even if your dad and your mom are very active, you know, Dr. Anna and Pastor Adele. No, no, no. When you come to the bottom of it, you have to find it for yourself. And it may be here at the other Christian Fellowship. It may be in another church, like what, what has happened to us. It's funny, I have to tell you this, and our Debbie might be watching right now, and she knows this. I have a best friend in that small town of Richmond, Indiana, who was a pastor in 2021, when we came here, they were reading. I had set up an appointment with him to be there in their church that Sunday, and it was Sunday morning at seven o'clock. I was doing this Facebook, I do Facebook Live every day in the morning, and also YouTube. And, then we came out of the house in her pajamas and she said, Dad, are you going to this and so church? I go, yes, I'm not. 10 o'clock will be there. No, please don't go. Why? Because I'm going there. What? Because I'm going there. I don't want you to be there. I don't know because I'm again. Okay, Anna. So I texted the pastor. Pastor, I'll see you in the coffee shop tomorrow. And he understood. And you know what? Many, many times we don't know how the Lord is moving in our children's hearts, but you just let God do His will and way in them. If it's hard for us fathers, I'll tell you it's hard for the mothers, you know? Harder for the moms. So they go through a lot of prayers. And I'll warn you though, kids, mother's prayers are always answered by the Lord. I know that for a fact because my dad was a rebel during his time. 
he was a rebel. You know, among the five pastors, Pio Tica was the most rebellious. He would be a dancer, drunkard, you know, womanizer, going home 2 o'clock in the morning, you know. The thing here that the kids are doing, that's old, you know. Back in the 60s, they did that. And when he goes uh, back home at 2 o'clock in the morning, he could always go back there and just, you know, lie in the ground somewhere near the house. And her mom would always be there. His mom would always be there. And he would be awakened by drops, warm drops of uh, tears on his face. Because her, his mom prayed for him every time. And that changed his heart. Keep praying because you don't know what the future brings. But we know who holds the future. So our theme verse during our 27 years of wedding in the first day was to trust his heart, which is in Psalm 56, verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Do we want to see this song? Please? That's an empty, trust his heart. Right there, yes. And the, the words will be here. You know the song. Written by uh, uh, Daddy Mason. And uh, it's a beautiful song that we sang during the wedding. We want to sing that before we have our fellowship here this afternoon. And those watching on Facebook Live, continue to trust in God's heart. You'll be surprised that God has a much better plan for you and your family, even this afternoon. Yeah, right. Thank you. Oh, 
Christ's best for you.